Ben's in. It's battery week. I mean uh, battery week. Elon Musk, battery week. Is that a thing? Like, should, why isn't shoe week at Nike a thing and condom week at Church and Dwight not a thing? Like, why do they, why can't we get bad weeks that I care about? Chart week. I like shark week. I don't give a fuck about Battery Week. No, Chart Week, not Shark Week. Everybody likes Shark Week. There should be a fracking week. There should be a sharding week. So, I just sharded. That was a great T-shirt. I just sharded. What's up? Um, nothing, man. Just um, yo, I was gonna ask you, what's up with these spacks? Tell the people. Look at the smile on your face. You're such a junkie. You you you're on stock with way too much during the day. Look at that no, smile. Can't, you can't take a smile off your face. Had a good day. Had a good day. It's been a. I've had some bad calls, so I'm like, you know, I'm just kind of like getting my. It's been a good market for me. You know, obviously some good calls, but a couple of my recent calls are not working in my favor. But I, I you know, you just move on with it. But uh, one of my talk great. To, talk to me about spacs. Talk to me. What what is a spac? Tell the folks at home. Well, I'm not some technical expert on these. I'm not a lawyer. Come on. I said the word SPAC and you just smile like a, like a little schoolboy. <laughs> I don't even know how to smile. I'm just some curmudgeon at my age. As soon as, my pro- soon as I started to have trouble peeing, I don't even know how to smile. I think all your joy in your face, just this is when you start getting lines, when sand starts coming out. You're all excited to pee and you stand there for 40 minutes and nothing comes out. You don't even you forget what it's like to smile. Just backed up. Sorry, what was the question? Spacks, Howard. Look at the smile, it's back. <laughs> I only smile for two things, Robin Hood and Spacks. You smile for Robin Hood? And Spacks. Maybe they'll combine one day and they'll have a double smile, happy meal. So, um, what was the question? What <laughs> is a Spac? So, um, the um, a spec is a specialty purpose acquisition corporation, I believe. That is the 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 term. Now it has a terrible heritage of crazy Canadians and Australians and street securities and people just putting together uh, special blank check, it's a blank check, right? Check things to go do drilling and weird things. Uh, will never change, obviously. Can it, for as conservative uh, financially as Canada is, they're SPAC crazy. They've been SPAC crazy since the beginning of time. Those Natural stories. resources, specifically. Yeah, literally. You go into like a, a venture capital office in, in, in Canada, and there's like a picture of a mining pit that's been harvested with like dead people, and like, you know, and there's like John Deere tractors. And I'm like, what? What? This isn't venture capital. And then you go into uh, an entrepreneur's uh, place in Silicon Valley right now. It's SPAC. It's, it's, it's restoration hardware SPAC uh, decorated. So SPACs are basically just an expression of, of a promoter or a, a person who can put together deals to get shit done. And in a world of uh, cloud economy, Or not get anything done as we've grown accustomed to over the years of SPACs. Now, is, is, is that changing now? Are SPACs actually going to be a good Here, thing? Here's what's happened. And I, you got to give credit where credit's is due. I had J- Jason Robbins, great podcast that I put together um, to talk about this. Because he was I like- see how of, you did that great podcast that I put together. I see how you did that. What were we talking about? <laughs> Who show it? Listen, you want to have your show, get some crappy guests look, and you talk over them. This is like heavy duty material. I needed to I needed to call you out on that shameless plug. This great uh, podcast that I put together. By the way, that may be my you new need like a scarf. Like a I scarf may, when you say that. I want to get listen, there's gonna be a year where I just bike around the world and wear a scarf and goggles. And a cape. Maybe a cape. <laughs> You're definitely so, gonna get punched in the face with your mouth <laughs> in that outfit. <laughs> I'd probably get less chance of getting punched in the face. Than I would just being on Twitter all day. So anyway, so uh, SPAC. So I'll tell you about this podcast. This great podcast that you Jason put together. Robin, SPACs kind of were like a backwater thing. Once or twice a year, you hear about it and you're like, roll your eyes. And then DraftKings, because I couldn't raise money. Jason tells the story of how like one of his investors or a friend that like had a SPAC, and you know, literally, and. You know, about a year ago, six months ago, they backed into a SPAC 
backing into a SPAC. That's the term. That's the way the kids talk these days, backing so into the SPAC. If you're in Howie Town and you don't say backing into the SPAC, you could get- You have to like moonwalk back. into it? How does that work exactly? We get a piece of paper that says, you've been fined by Howie Town $7 <laughs> for not saying backing into SPAC. Okay, so you backed into the SPAC. They backed into the SPAC. And I think a lot of people were like, oh, now they backed into SPAC because that was their only choice, right? So, you know, forgetting what the promoters make and yada, yada, yada. And, and tell me why. Why was that their only choice? Because the market, like, sports was dead, uh, COVID. Uh, they needed to raise a lot of money. And, you know, venture capitalists like clean, sexy stories, right? It was like a bad timing. And sure enough, they, let's be honest, like it was a great idea. Right. You know, you can take your money from from uh, Fidelity or T. Rowe Price or and get and, you know, pull your pants down and play no momentum. You know, daddy's coming home or you. Uh, How you really feel. <laughs> that's how he felt. Uh, listen to the podcast. It was great. The uh, you put it together. <laughs> you put it together. Howie Town. Howie Town Productions. So um, long story short, because this story is probably the longest story I ever told at this point. <laughs> is um who are we talking about the uh oh my prostate so so he had to get that deal done but they had a great company let's face it people want to gamble like they the sports is going to come back but he did that deal in the depths depths of covid i think and um you know drag a great a great ceo and a great business and a great community and a great product and you know the timing was right and, you know, people re-engineer. You talk about, like, the Chinese re-engineering things and blah, blah, blah. Once you see things get done right, people aren't stupid. And just like direct listings, we want to see direct listings, you know. You, you take apart an IPO and you go, fuck, Goldman's making a lot of money for doing but who that. loses? Banks lose as usual? Great question. So, I, as I said today, look at the stocks, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs. That was a prime. There are $40 billion in SPACs done this year. Is that a lot? Credit Swiss thinks so. But what's 40 billion? Like 3% of what Facebook's valuation is? Like, hello, 200 billion. Now, that 200 billion that Goldman's going to make uh, 20 billion in fees off of, plus the rake, plus the upside, plus all the deals that they get to put together. So a guy like Chamath comes along, or even me, or whoever these next spackers are, the old fracking spacking Howie Town. Fracking spackers. Fracking spackers. The old fracking spackers <laughs> that come along. And we're looting J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. And we're realizing, did you really need them? In a world where DraftKings product is love, the consumers are hanging out on Reddit, Twitter, stock twits, uh, wherever. The shareholders are distributed across these social networks. We're all talking about these companies. What do we care? We don't trust Goldman anyway. So all of a sudden, next year, you could be taking 20 bill of revenue out of these banks, uh, which was like a high margin part of their business. So all they can go back to doing is nothing. So it's a really interesting time. SPACs is a really important subject. None Our, of these names can, sh can are, create any shareholder are, value. Goldman's done is, nothing for 13 years. Who is going to lose? So we said the banks are going to lose. Travel is going to lose, right? Road shows that used to get done are now getting done on Zoom. Those were road shows where people stayed at the Four Seasons, traveled first class, you know, had parties, you know, got pitches in, in rooms, back backyard, you know, handshake deals for, you know, millions of dollars for syndicates, uh, you know, IPO day pops. Dude, we are like, this was brought on by greed. You know, SPACs have their own problems, but this was brought on by decades of fucking negligence uh, by financiers. And this tool existed. People were, yeah, and it had a bad brand. SPACs had a bad brand. Now it's like SPAC Lindsen. I've, I've been SPAC Lindsen for two months and no one's, and people are just starting to notice, right? And Chamath just announced, I don't know, like a hundred SPACs or something like A to Z. And these are people I get to talk on the phone with. Like I can call Adam Bain and say, can I get Chamath on my podcast? And yeah, Chamath gets it. He's a promoter. And, and he's not like a promoter in the worst way. Like if you had told me that SPACs would be the number one thing talked about on StockTwits in 2020, I would have said, what are you talking about, Willis? We went, we went Willis. on full Canada. We went full Canada. Willis, what you be talking about? JJ. And I'd be saying like, no. And so I constantly am surprised and open-minded about what this is. And so I think that there's a lot of problems. There's still the VIG. There's still the, uh, the floats. There's still, you got to get the right promoter and then you got to 
you got to hope that the management picks a great company and has the vision to pull this off. So it's not like, poof, this is a, a be all and end all, but it definitely is a, a nice innovation on top of SoftBank putting $400 million into a deal because he had a good Uber ride with the WeWork CEO. How is that efficient? Like, let, what are we going to let Massa blow up the, the Saudis money? I mean, if people want to blow their brains out on, on, on Robinhood or E-Trade, well, who am I to judge? Yeah. And maybe they're smarter. So I think this is a culmination of, of, of neglect from the banks, uh, too many rules at the SEC level that forced, uh, and then there's all this vision pent up uh, from people leaving Facebook and great tech companies that have relationships and want to get deals done and these software companies. So this is the beginning of the SPAC this revolution? This is like the beginning of something. And Mickey, and I've written this on my blog, which is free, by the way. Uh, is it great? It's stupendous. You read it. Did don't you, even, fucking, uh, don't is, even did give you me design it? To read the thing. It is. I do it's like cool. it because it's, it's quick, efficient, always adds value. Quick, get to the point. Okay, enough, JC. I know you love me. You just could have said it's great. I'm you know? paying for sins, Lord. I'm paying for sins. Hold on. First of all, did you just so, say, Willis, what you talking about before? Yeah. <laughs> Willis, what you be talking about? JJ. Oh, you're gonna make fun of me. You that? just said, Willis, what you talking about? You really just said that. How great a it's reference. What you talking about, Willis? 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 Yeah, uh, but it was pretty good reference. It was a great reference, but you slaughtered it. Like it was just not, not even close. Yeah, but you. I had to call you out on that. If, you know, I had to call you out. Yeah, but Willis, not. what you talking about? <laughs> JJ. Dynamite. The uh, so this is the beginning of the SPAC revolution. This is the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Ten years from now, we're gonna have SPACs. Ten years from now, you're gonna have like we're still got six percent fucking real estate rates and Zillow's at all time highs, right? Like, think about the innovation that's coming into the public markets. Okay, I know you'll edit this, but there's some gems that are coming out of this nonsense that I'm spewing over the last half hour. Gems, gems. You're you getting these gems down. This. Gemology. Okay, Howie Town's going take two. So listen, this is really important and fun, is that it's been shit. There was 8,000 public companies 20 years ago. There's 4,000 today. That sucks. Why? Okay. Why? Because rules, bad behavior, a, a, a pipe that has Goldman and JP Morgan controlling, you know, the process. But doesn't that have a lot to do with you have mega cap companies where you have companies within them like AWS within Amazon that didn't used to be the case. And then I also venture the money, venture money many, you further. Like there are reasons why there are fewer stocks. It's not just one reason. I agree. I mean, yeah. listen, well, why is that a bad thing though? I didn't say it's a bad thing. Oh, it's, it's been, it's been shit. shit. Oh, you did. Nature, this is like Velociraptor. Everything comes back to Velociraptors and Jurassic Park. You put 80 dinosaurs, all male, they're still going to figure out how to have babies, right? And so you can, you can do, make all these mistakes and you can have mega caps and you can say, oh, it's the antitrust and it's politics and there's just like no chance. And sure enough, life finds a way. Money finds a way. And so this is going to be the solution for mega caps, right? This is going to be a, a and we're going to have a lot of problems with SPACs. There's going to be bad behavior as we're seeing with Nicola. People have to buy or beware, but you asked for it. You got it. Toyota. The, uh, <laughs> that could be the SPAC commercial. You asked for it. You got it. SPAC town. Boy, I'm running a lot of commercials today. You're the so, spokesman. You're the spokesman for SPAC town. SPAC town, SPAC Howie town. town. USA. So, uh, so what you're going to have, and, and Mickey at Ribbit Capital just did a $600 million spec. One of the smartest guys I know won't come on my podcast because he's not a promoter type and doesn't need me. Um, he said something very interesting. He said, this is like the dot-com boom. Any great entrepreneur or firm or brand can do a spec, just like you could buy a dot-com. Will there be like crappy dot-coms and pets dot-coms? Absolutely. But will there be SPACs that if you do your work and know the promoters and understand the company they're buying and know how to distribute? This is like unbelievable. This is like what we were promised when the internet came out. It, yeah, it's a bad name, whatever it is. It's, it's, a, it's the internet working. It's social networks talking about stocks. It's CEOs using podcasts to tell their story. It's this great vision. It's someone who was never in banking like Chamath, like 
figuring out how to like become the new Kramer and getting an hour on CNBC and having to put up with all the dumb questions that they ask him. It's like everything's being reimagined. I mean, this is fantastic. And you can trade for free. And every single person in the world has inside information. So in a world where inside information was the problem, it remains the problem. But guess what? Everybody has it. But isn't that what we're analyzing as technicians? We're analyzing the behavior of markets, even markets that are moving with inside information. We're seeing that. Isn't that a huge advantage? It's phenomenal. It's just nothing could get me happier and nothing has surprised me more than SPACs. SPACs. Because the whole idea of MASA controlling the future of markets was disgusting. It was taking the fun out of the game. When they can come along and put $500 million into a three-year-old company, where's the art in the business? Where is, you know, so, so WeWork was the top for many things. It may not have been the top for the stock market. Oh, real estate's going to be because of WeWork. No, the virus killed fucking Midtown, not WeWork. And, and it was destined to die anyways. And Massa killed Put the last. Stage. Nobody likes hanging out in Midtown. I, when I left New York City no, five saying, years ago, COVID I would was the never final go thing. Back. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. We work. That was the problem. Right. It was. It was a problem. And it was COVID the people. It was the. Back. It was everything in Midtown. The buildings. It was stupidity. Elevators. Not street level. You need to be street level. But more importantly, what was stupid was and good for Masa. He had a good hack. He was like raising money from the Arabs and uh, or Saudis and just like being their money launderer using uh, $400 million and we work, hey, listen, so $400 disappears to launder a hundred billion, uh, well played, right? Like everybody's happy, but guess what? The consumer was losing. We, we need more public companies, more vision, more supply. Everybody trusts American uh, still around markets. We're still the leader around markets. We may have lost a semiconductor war. We may have lost uh, the, the war against China, but the Chinese like fraud. I'm not going to get me to buy a Chinese stock over an American promoted stock. That's a great vision. So I'm really excited about it. As you can tell, uh, I hope, uh, and, and the tables are turned. I, how we could have a SPAC. I'm not saying I want one. And what would that SPAC look like? I'm not telling you because I would wreck the SPAC. You can't talk about it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's very, kind of like hush, Fight hush. Club. SPAC is like Fight Club. You can't say what you're going to do or else it's illegal. Got it. Part of like the SPAC thing is, is a church and state. Like you, there's risk. You have to raise the money for the SPAC and, and your investors in that SPAC, you know, before they get the pop have taken the risk that uh, you can, you know, raise that money. And then you got two years to find a company. So there's still, it's kind of a weird, stupid, there's still a lot of things that trust, are weird they, about they it. They would trust Howie Town to find that company. Yeah, so there's risk and there's still- And like, it has to be one company. It can't be a series of companies like a VC fund. No rule. So I'm saying- You can do anything you want. Your imagination and whatever you think you can get investors. I mean, there's still, uh, it's still complicated. And it's so not, social leverage theoretically could be a SPAC. Social leverage will have a SPAC if we want one. The question oh. is, what do, we, what do we do with it once we have one? With uh -huh. great power comes great responsibility. Ah, uh, is so, that what it is? Yeah. So did you learn something from SPAC hour? I, I did. I, th I thought it was a good conversation. How did it, we were talking about SPACs. I'm like, that's a good how we, how we chat. Did you learn something? Not really. <laughs> well, yeah. then let's start again. Howard, what do investors do to take advantage of this new era of SPACs that you believe we're entering? Like, you're an investor, you're sitting at home, you're like, all right, what does this mean for me? What should I be looking out for? What do you tell them? No, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know how to teach this stuff. I just know how to do it you're, on my own. So you're own. an investor, right? You're an investor. You got a couple hundred thousand in your portfolio. You have 10,000 in your portfolio. You have a couple of million, whatever it is. What do I do now? What do I do? What, what do I do with these SPACs that you speak of? SPACs are no different than venture capital or no different than stocks. Like you have to know what you own. You have to have a plan around what that company does and they're earning. They, got, they release their financials just like a public company. So you've got to... Uh, I only own a little bit of DraftKings. I don't think I own any and Can anybody SPACs. get in these SPACs or is it restricted? How does that work? At the beginning it is because it's private capital. You, you know, you're taking risk. You, Accredited you investors only, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, so I, think, I think in five years, if the bull market continues or if 
you know, liquidity continues, I think SPACs will evolve to be, you know, much lower on the fees, like where the promoters right now are like no different than the banks. They got a nice promote for putting all the deal together. <clears throat> As this gets more competitive, you know, do you want that dilution? You know, do, is there going to be a Robin Hood for SPACs, like an app where if you want to launch a SPAC, like you press a button, you open an account, there's my free SPAC? Theoretically, yes. Everybody with a good audience should have a SPAC. The Robin Hood of SPACs. Yeah. So uh, you, so you have a brokerage way, account and you have a SPAC a, account. Anybody with 5,000 people on their sub stack gets a SPAC. Boom. Like a joke going around. Like if you have a, you know, it's just no different than dot com. If you have a great idea and a great brand and a great community and a great revenues and you have a great vision, maybe you should have a SPAC. Should I have a SPAC? No. You should just focus Why? on building your business. Well, unless you want to have a bigger idea. You make it seem like everybody should have a SPAC. I barely know what a Did SPAC it. is, but you make me want to have one. You know, like you're, you're kidding. This it's is very sexy, come. the SPAC thing. I feel like I, I feel like I want one. Is this so SPAC, a, is it like a blockchain? Is there anything? No? <laughs> SPAC chain, no. There's no SPAC chain. There's a, that's, that's, SPAC that still comes down to pleasing investors. You still got to make investors money. So they have to believe that the business that you're going to buy is a great, that you're a great deal maker and that you can buy a business at a reasonable valuation that when it goes public, it's still going to have a, you know, a, be a growth business. So, so you have to align with people that really want to go public. There's lots of great businesses that will never SPAC because they're like, why do I need the headache of being public? None yeah, of that. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't need a SPAC. So say, it's not like every great company is going to SPAC. No, most great yeah. companies will say, no, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. But I'm draft with that. The joy of DraftKings has gone from 10 to $54. Would that have been fun if it was private? No, the amount of joy that people are having and the amount of – now the fact that you can compare the multiples to Penn and kind of at least have a relationship, right? It just – opens up the world a little more. It's not perfect, but at least it gives people context to how to value other things. We need public markets so that things are less opaque, right? Well, the beautiful thing about public markets is the price. Because if you, if you derivative out the price and work backwards from the price, you can figure out what a company is worth and how people feel and like value it. You know what I mean? And, and if you don't have price, you got nothing. You, have you sound like a technical analyst, Howard. I'm so proud of you. It makes me so happy, Howard. Common sense. If you don't have price, you have nothing, and the whole system breaks down because you have chaos. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Howard Lindzen, the technical analyst. No, I, like I, am, I am a price, price pays, like Shannon and I say, and price also delivers so much freedom and confidence because – you got if, if if you have trust in prices, everything works, and so we need more public companies, good and bad. Obviously, it would be fun if they were all good, but we need more public companies to allow the private markets to be healthier, because if everybody's just marking their shit up and acting like Trump doing his real estate deals and faking numbers, you know, it's not good. Like people need to like be able to price things. So so SPACs, I don't know how I can say it so many ways, are like important innovation. Wow. Something yeah. so old school and so gangster is an important very innovation. Gangster. Very gangster. It is gangster.